it was once the biggest airline in Africa. It dominated both regional and international destinations in comparison to other African airlines. South African Airways basically lived up to its vision, to be Africa's leading world-class airline. Fast forward to 2020 and the airline is struggling to survive. In fact, just the other day, it announced plans to lay off all its employees. What happened? Is this the end? First, a brief history. In 1934, the government of South Africa acquired struggling Union Airways and then formed South African Airways. The new airline experience growth over the years, which included expansion to multiple international destinations. However, the budding airline was no stranger to challenges even back then. Most independent African countries were against apartheid. So, they denied South African Airways use of their airspace, forcing it to make long detours around the continent. To make matters worse, Competing European airlines were allowed to fly over Africa. In the 1980s, anti-apartheid opposition internationally had reached a boiling point. Due to economic sanctions against South Africa, the airline was forced to suspend its key international flights to the United States and Australia. After the end of apartheid, South Africa resumed all its international flights and also started flying to new African destinations. The airline was finally able to take off and expand easier than ever. Up to this point, the business was mostly working out well. South African dominated all traffic between Africa and the rest of the world, making Johannesburg a major hub. This success translated into mostly profitable years for the airline until 2011. Since then, the airline registered the longest streak of consecutive losses. And as you can see, they kept getting bigger and bigger. After 2017, the airline decided to stop publicizing its financial statements. By the end of 2019, the airline almost went into bankruptcy. So, let's try and figure out how it got into this mess. Bailouts The airline has become overly dependent on handouts from South African taxpayers since 1999. The bailouts just got bigger as the losses increased over time. Even though bailouts prevented the airline from collapsing, they did not solve the underlying problems. The airline has failed in becoming self-sufficient. In the last decade, the bailouts amounted to over 16 billion rand. Expensive fleet renewal. In the 2000s, South Africa embarked on an extensive fleet renewal program with Airbus as their supplier. The airline placed an order for 41 new aircrafts with a price tag of $3.5 billion. This was the biggest ever jetliner acquisition in African aviation history. The airline did not have $3.5 billion lying around to buy new aircraft. So they borrowed the money. Competition For a long time, South Africa enjoyed minimal competition both domestically and regionally. Internationally, it linked Africa to the rest of the world. The rise of multiple budget domestic airlines and the rise of Ethiopian airlines quickly eroded its superior position. Middle Eastern and European airlines dominated the international routes. Inefficient planes. Over the years, South Africa had acquired a fleet of quad aging Airbus A340s for their long haul flights. Their cost of operation increased as fuel prices rose. Experts also stated that this aircraft is not the best choice for long-range operations from hot and high Johannesburg hub. Debt The airline's total debt was relatively stable. As you can see in this graph, in 2012, the debt started to increase and by 2017, it had more than doubled to 33 billion rand. The airline struggled to pay its creditors, causing interest to accumulate. Corruption and mismanagement South Africa's president recently ordered an investigation into the airline for mismanagement, corruption, and unlawful conduct dating back to 2002. Geographical Location South Africa's Johannesburg hub location in the southern hemisphere of the globe does not help its situation. The location places South Africa at a disadvantage when competing with airlines with more centrally located hubs. This list is not comprehensive and many other factors may have led to the decline of the airline. In November 2019, the struggling airline faced an eight-day strike organized by its workers' union. The strike cost the airline an estimated 50 million rand a day. By the end of 2019, the airline was at the brink of liquidation. The government stepped in again and the airline was placed into bankruptcy protection. 
In February 2020, South Africa's finance minister announced that the national carrier would receive 2 billion rand to help with restructuring. The airline is facing out the Airbus A340s and replacing them with the much more economical and newer twin engines A350s. It has also cancelled some of its loss-making destinations. The airline faces an uphill task. It has to regain favor with its customers who have always faced uncertainties due to service interruptions. Competition is fierce than ever, especially from Ethiopian Airlines. South African has another problem. The COVID-19 pandemic has devastated the global airline industry. Many airlines are in danger of going out of business. We let survive with no revenue? The airline recently offered plans to lay off all its employees. It seems like the end is here. We let survive with no revenue? I would like to hear from you. Do you know other reasons that cause the airline's problems? Let me hear your thoughts in the comments.